Hey, I'd like to say good evening on the Keith Andrew Network this evening. I am actor Chris D. Roberts. Uh, I'm going to share a brief uh, story with Keith about my journey in the acting industry. I want to thank each and every one of you who have chose to tune in. Uh, feel free to reach out to any of my social medias. Uh, look forward to hearing from you people. Um, also looking forward to any collaborations in the future. But again, basically this is just a, an introduction to my brief story in the acting industry so far, and we're looking forward to brighter days ahead. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, Keith Andrew Network, for having me on your show. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keith Andrew. Available on all social medias is the one, the only, the Keith Andrew Network, 1,000. And 60. That's right, 1,060 episodes of the greatest, some of the good, some of the bad, some of the ugly. But the point of all the messages show people with a disability. Now, this is going to be show B. Show A has the introduction. So, show B has a different introduction. So, I'm making a special example for you. The whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a learned disability, I can sell them out to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities that never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. You should prove to them and sell them out to something. So hashtag break the labels. So that being said, it's PG, PG-13, uncensored, this is your time. It's whatever you want to talk about. I normally don't do my speech, but on the side, so I have, I'm a big wrestling fan. So my main show, uh, it's my red show. Every, everything is red and it has an introduction. It has the speech, but for my second show, it doesn't have a speech to it. So I'm going to start including that. On the second show, so it makes a difference. But with that being said, it's not about me. This is about you. First question I want to ask you is, what attracted you to begin your acting career? Well, you know, honestly, um, first of all, Keith, thank you for having me on the show. It's a pr privilege to be here and share my experience. Uh, In 2019, I uh, came across an ad on the internet looking for extras for a, a film in the Pittsburgh area there. Uh, being from up north originally, northwest Pennsylvania, Franklin, Venango County, uh, I decided to go ahead and, you know, throw my name in the hat for an extra. Well, it turned out it was, it was a Netflix production and... Uh, it was a film, Sweet Girl is the film, with Jason Momoa. And I, I went ahead and took took the weekend off from work, you know, and uh, rented an Airbnb. And I decided that, you know, this is my first film experience. I'm just going to go make a whole weekend of it. So I went down there and got into my Airbnb, went to the staging area. They were loading us all up on buses because we were extras at a baseball game. So there was hundreds of us, you know. To this day, I've yet to see my mug on the film, but I'm in there because there's just so many of us. But anyhow, when I stepped on that film set, Keith, I knew this was something I wanted to pursue. So having said that, living in a, a rural northwestern Pennsylvania town, you know, 30,000 people, maybe tops, anyway... I realized that if I was going to pursue said passion, you know, of being and at first, I don't even think it was, I wanted to be an actor. I just wanted to be involved. If that makes sense. You know, I wanted to take part in what I was seeing going down there. It was exciting. So anyhow, uh, I decided at that point that see, I, my parents divorced when I was young. And my mother moved to Southwest Florida, Fort Myers. 
so I had grown up between the both states. I had that privilege, you see. I'd come to Florida for vacation and go back up home for school in snow. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, <clears throat> in 2020, I remember talking to my friends in 30 degree weather about making movies in Florida. You know, I was all in. I had given two weeks notice. I had landed a job in Fort Myers. Long story short, to be closer to the film industry in 2020, I made an 1100, 1200 mile journey south to basically start all over again. You see, uh, it was a bold move. I was, let's see, I was like 43 at that time. You see, a decision made late in life to, to, to go a different direction, you know. And as I told you earlier, it's, it's pretty much been white knuckles all the way. However, I can say since 2019, that one film credit, it's now 2023 and I've managed to amass almost 30 now. So, you know, I, I've been fortunate when I got to Florida, I got involved with, you know, film groups, acting groups, uh, started auditioning, answering casting calls, you know, this, that, the other. And, and I began to, to have a presence in the Florida film industry, you know, and I, I owe a lot of that to the people that gave me a chance, you know, in the beginning, you know, people like Joe fame, uh, Heather Fraley, Annette day, you know, I could go on and on. The list is endless about the people that took a shot, and gave Chris D. Roberts an opportunity to be on a film set. Now, all that aside, there's no glamour, there's no glitz. You know, I, <clears throat> I've been to film sets with, with millions of dollar budgets. I've been to film sets where, you know, we're eating snacks and, and, and you know, for lack of better words, ramen noodles, you know, production sets, but I've been there and I've helped work and create. And, you know, that, that was the passion initially. It, it, the passion wasn't for me to be some great actor as if that could happen one day. The passion was to aid people in taking their creation and bringing it to life. Case in point, I answered an audition and call one time for a super superhero role. The producer was like, think Iron Man. So I'm like, okay, great. So I travel from Fort Myers to the Miami Convention Center to a Comic-Con that was just so, that just so happened to be the introduction of the, the creator's character. So here I, I show up at this Comic-Con, and I'm the mascot of the whole show. He throws me a spandex suit. As soon as I get there, I'm like, oh, boy, here we go. What have I gotten myself into? And, and to be honest, for, for the, it was a paid gig, but for the pay, I was kind of like, you know, is this going to be the first film job I ever walk off of? It was just that strange at the point at that point you know but as i begin to speak to the gentleman that you know created the character it was great costume and whatnot you know i mean aside from it, it had led lights and i my eyesight's already bad so with led lights in my eyes i was basically the superhero that needed a guide because <laughs> i couldn't <laughs> see <laughs> so anyway uh but no Keith, when he explained to me his passion, you understand? He told me what that project meant to him. And as I sat there and listened to him, it resonated with, with me that, you know what? I may not, this may not be the best gig I ever have. I may actually be a little weird feeling doing it, but, you know, listening to this guy, I'm going to help him out. So, you know, I spent eight hours there wearing a suit, sweating my tail off, blind as a bat, thousands of pictures, and, you know, turns out uh, PBS was there. 
and they were looking at his pro or his content for a, a pilot, you know, for PBS. So saying that also to say when you're when you're involved in the industry, you never know who you could cross paths with. It's a huge industry. It's a very brutal industry, you know, um, rejection. You got to you got to learn to just love rejection. Take it, take it up, you know, turn the other cheek, whatever you got to do. You got to find a way to deal with that, because sometimes when you're auditioning for roles and whatnot, I mean, you're up against a lot of people and you're going to hear no a whole lot. So, you know, I mean, it's definitely not for the faint of heart. No, you're. I completely agree with you. But the one thing I do not do on my show, as I've been told for the past ten years, do not pay people to be on your show. And I turn down interviews. I'm like, I'm a big fan of yours. I would love to have you here. I'm not paying you. Well, if I had a sponsor that I had people giving me money, okay, fine. I wouldn't care. But I have money to pay bills. So if I, you know, right now this is a hobby. So sure. if I need to um, pay, you know, for food and electricity or pay a one-shot wonder, you know, not to sound like an asshole, I'm going to do but my bills, my heat, my electricity. But eventually, once I get to the point of having a partner and not in that type of way, obviously, but some, sure. a partner or someone to work with, say, mm. oh, don't worry. You want someone? I got it covered. Absolutely. But if it's coming out of my wallet and I need my work for that, not to talk about money, but actually, actually I do want to talk to you about that. Let me ask you, a while ago, someone made a, um, a comment saying, when you audition, should they be paid for their time? Do you agree or disagree? The person auditioning? Yes. Well, I do know this much. The person auditioning should certainly not have to pay to audition. Now, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of places out there that you know that they 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 give you this glitz and glam. They're like, oh, come read for this Nike commercial. We'll call you. You know, if you make the call back, blah blah blah. And then they're, they're reaching for your wallet. You know. Yeah. Uh, I know personally that there is a lot of preparation involved in auditioning. So that is a, a very, uh, a good question, you know, as far as someone being compensated to audition. Um, that's a rabbit hole, you know, I mean, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what, how I feel about that. I, again, I feel like the person's time is valuable, obviously. And again, auditioning is no, no real fly by night procedure because you got to figure two or process. You've got to figure two. You've probably spent 20 hours of your, of your week, you know, learning the lines, working on physicalities, working on blocking, you know, how you're going to want to look when you audition. So, man, that, that's, that's a great, uh, that's a great can of worms you opened there. And I, I feel like, yeah, I, I would, uh, you know, uh, maybe slip it in on the invoice for production somehow, some way. No, I agree. You know, what do you agree or disagree? But it's a dissident. It's kind of like a job. I like, same thing. You don't get paid for it. But what I mean is if you're willing to meet someone halfway, it's like, hey, come down. I give you like $10. I pay for your gas. Uh, mm -hmm. We have food. You can go eat the food. You know, do something. Don't you know, be an ass. Be like, oh, come down. Okay, you're not the part. Well, I'm out. Uh, what am I on to? Uh, $400. And it's kind of like, and it got nothing. Right. But doing an audition, it's not guaranteed. I, was, I know that. But you need to show people. You, your company obviously say what makes your company different is saying okay we can't pay you for being an audition but what I know you traveled we ordered pizza for you and the staff at least you can eat something you 
God forbid, you know, use the bathroom. Uh, but, you know, it does be a little more hospitable if that, or human, if that makes any sense. Yeah, most productions, you know, I've, I've worked on, they, they do provide some food, you know. Uh, you know, and I can't, I can't, uh, I can't honestly say I've ever been on a production that didn't take care of their actors, you know, uh, going beyond the, the being paid for auditioning. Let's talk about being on set. You know, you've signed up, you've done your work, you know, you, you've, you've prepared your character. You've put that time into this endeavor and it may even have been, it may even be six months beyond when you locked in the role, if you will. So you're there, you know, and uh, so they feed you. And, and again, where I was going with it, it can be grueling, yeah. you know, and those guys go out of their way to make sure. I mean, granted, they're not they may not be paying you. And this is always this is always, you know. Everybody starts not making money in this industry, obviously, from the filmmaker, from from everybody, the whole way down, up and down. You know, you start with the passion, you pursue it, you reach in your own pocket. You know, you fuel your own dream, you know. But anyway, having said that, again, I've never been on a production that has not taken decent. Well, there was one, but I won't. I'm not a mudslinger, so I won't get into that. But. Every uh, every director I've had the privilege to work under has has been very professional. You know, often these non paid gigs will come with an IMDb credit. So I've done projects that I didn't get paid for, but I got that credit, and that credit in turn created paid work. So you know, it's always been. It's it's never really been a displeasure working for free so when i talk about working for free i'm not saying it's a bad thing because obviously everyone in the industry knows you're gonna do some free work you know and and having said that with the mentality that uh this opportunity could be get another opportunity bro you just show up and give 110 and next thing you know yeah you're, you're getting better bigger opportunities uh, the, the people that I've worked with, I had privilege to work with, my friend J.P. Gates. He's a gentleman from, from the U.K. who's pretty prosperous in the film industry there. He told me, he says, keep working. Just keep working. And when the big payday comes, you're going to be ready. So, And I'm not saying I'm going big screen, famous. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is with that mentality – of keep working and building and building and building, you may find yourself one day attaining, you know, more so than when you started, obviously. No, you're absolutely right. Now, I do have a couple questions for you off the air. And stay tuned. If you're watching this, make sure to subscribe to YouTube, TikTok, LinkedIn, all social medias for the sit down with Keith Andrew. But the last question I want to ask you is, have you worked with any big name celebrities? And besides me, obviously, have you worked with people with disabilities? Well, you know, Keith, uh, I have worked with some some larger names in the industry. Uh, I had a privilege. There was a film I watched when I was a teenager called Blood In, Blood Out. Uh, Damien Chapa played the, the lead role of Miklo in that film. So I went from watching it as a teenager, fast forward 30 years, and I had my first fight scene with Miklo from Blood In, Blood Out. So that was a phenomenal experience. Uh, Jeremy Meeks, you may not, the, the name may not ring a bell, but if you remember, I don't know, five or six years ago, the, the, the felon mugshot that went viral, real light-skinned gentleman with blue eyes, Anyway, I've been in three films with him, and it was it was a great experience because the first film, I was like, hey, you got any tips for a new actor? 
Fast forward six months, I'm back on another film set with them, able to say, hey, I took your advice. Here I am again. And then fast forward another year, the third time I'm on a film set with them. So, you know, it, just continuously working at it. Uh, what was the other part of the question? Well, have you worked as people with disabilities? Keith, I've had the privilege of uh, not, in, in, not in my acting career, but I've, I've had the privilege in my personal career life to, uh, to work with dual diagnosed substance abuse uh, uh, clients. So I've had the privilege to work with people that, yeah, in fact, do have disabilities, whether it be, you know, uh, uh, the substance abuse issue teamed with, you know, whatever mental uh, uh, diagnosis they may have, whether it be anxiety, you know, ad infinitum. So as far as, you know, working hands on with them, yeah, pretty much. Uh, and it, it was a it was a huge privilege because coming from the past I came from, I was able to share my experience, strength and hope with these people too that yeah, in fact did have some disabilities. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I do have a couple questions for you off the air, but how can our fans and listeners get in touch with you? Okay, uh, I'm on Facebook as Chris D. Roberts. Uh, you can Google Chris D. Roberts. I have Chris D. Roberts one as an Instagram account. Um, on Twitter, I'm not sure of the uh, all the particulars. I could get you more particulars. Um, but yeah, Chris D. Roberts with the K. Feel free to follow me on my Facebook. Uh, got some things I'm working on. You know, uh, it, it's a process here, this this journey in the film industry. And, uh, yeah, please feel free to follow me up. Feel free to Google me to see my work. Uh, I got some work on Google there. Yeah, absolutely. And if anyone wants, looks in the description box, all your information will be there, your bio, all your social media links. And we will definitely – do a part two. But with that, saying, with that being said, stay tuned. When we come back for this commercial break, we're going to do the sit down with Keith Andrew. But until we come back from that commercial break, it was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest. And I'm looking forward to part two down the road. I just want to say thank you for, for, <laughs> for your time. I can't even speak. Hint of the show, disability. But until we meet again, it was a real honor and privilege. And until we meet again, Catch you later. Thank you. Thank and you. have a good night.